Well, what's up, guys? Hey. Hey. And welcome to episode 56 of the Nothing But Controversy podcast. This week, we're going to be going over quite a few things in the world of football. Uh, of course, the conference championships are coming up this Sunday. Um, but before all that, we are officially now 17 days away from the Super Bowl. So, uh, yeah, we started that at 199. We're at 17 now. Kind of crazy. I can wait now. Oh, yeah, it's true. I'm actually kind of scared for the season end. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, but, yeah, before we get into the nick of this weekend, uh, I think we should talk about all the games last weekend because, my goodness, we probably had the best weekend of playoff football <clears throat> ever. Um, Fuck, four, it was awesome. All four games were walk-offs. Uh, the first three were walk-off field goals. The last one was the game of the – maybe the game of the decade. And uh, that ended on a, on a playoff – on an OT touchdown, but we'll get into that later. But first, let's get into the first game, um, which saw Dawson, the lone wolf, bangle taker, uh, get an early jump on, on the picks here. So, Fuck yeah, Bengals baby. won 19 to 16. Never in doubt. Uh, on a walk-off field goal, and I just – we could talk about the game and whatnot, but my favorite thing about that is after the game, Joe Burrow like comes out, like he's doing a bunch of interviews talking about Evan McPherson, the kicker. And he's like, right before, so right when Joe Burrow completed that pass to Jamar Chase, um, they were walking off the field and, and Evan McPherson goes up to Joe Burrow. And he's like, I guess we're going to the, the, the AFC championship before even going and knocking down a 54 or 52 yard oh, or whatever. Gator so, made, baby. That's savage. That's cold as fuck. Gator Joe Burr. <laughs> it, it gives me vibes of when Joe Burrow was in LSU and he was doing that interview and this the, the girl who was interviewing him had a picture of him as a baby. And before this is before the championship even happened. Um, <clears throat> she, was, she, she asked Joe Burrow, she's like, does this look like a Heisman Trophy winner? And he's like, that looks like a Nashville championship winner. God damn. And they put on, they proceeded to put like fucking 40 plus on Clemson. But yeah, yeah. that was a good game. Titans sold, in my opinion. They they didn't settle. They're frauds. They're frauds. How are the two first seeds in the NFL fucking frauds, man? They're just selling out. I don't know what they're doing. You can't win with Tannehill. I've seen enough. I think so. I agree. I think that's the root of the problem because when you look at that offense, there's no excuses for putting up 16 points against the Bengals. I'm sorry. Absolutely none. Zero. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Do I think they're gonna move on from Tannehill? Absolutely not. Probably. Do not. I think they should? A hundred percent. Yeah, I think the Titans should be a destination for one of these guys that are, you know, looking, might be looking for a new team. But obviously, Tannehill's there, and getting rid of him is probably not the easiest thing to do. Yeah, that's gonna be a big ask because his his contract's ridiculous. No? Yeah. I don't know how much. How much does he have left on that contract, though? I think two years. He definitely has at least a year left. That's the thing is, is maybe they consider going, like, if one of the QBs falls to them, do they take him and then rest, of, like, sit him for a year and then get rid of Tannehill in his last year? But. I think they need a quick you kind of, fix, that quarterback. When you watch football for so long, you kind of realize the types of quarterbacks that you could win with. He's not one of them. Ain't it. <laughs> he's, he's not one of them. Ain't it. <laughs> And Dawson was right. I'll, you know what? I'll admit when I was wrong. Yeah. Dawson, yeah. good for you. Dawson Look, was- and as as much as Der- it was great to have Derrick Henry back, I don't know about you guys. Obviously, he did score. He, he looked like a touch slow, I found. Yeah. He, he, he looked a touch slower for sure. And I guess that was, at the end of the day, part of the difference. But, no, I, the Titans are still a good team. But I just I just had that gut feeling. Um, mm. And at that point, I was fucking 9-0. and Yeah. Or no. Yeah, no, 7-0. Yeah. Whatever it was, fuck. Yeah, it was 7-0. and And then the next the second game, game happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which saw uh, Chainer the lone wolf. <laughs> I really <laughs> wanted to take the awesome. I wish I did. I called it. Chainer at the, at the start of the playoffs said the Niners can go on a run, and here they are beating the number one seeded Super Bowl favorite Packers 13-10 in Lambeau. You want to talk about frauds? Yeah, fucking Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs is a fraud. Don't like, talk about the future quarterback of the Indianapolis Colts like yeah, that. Okay, okay. <laughs> he was on Pat McAfee today, and he said, 
when he makes his no, decision. No, that's where he's going to stay. He's going to stay at Pat McAfee. That's yeah, he says when he a, makes a his decision, road. he what? said when he makes his decision, he's going to fly down to Indy, go meet with Pat McAfee, and he's either going to – he said he's either going to pick up the hat, like a college like football announcement, either going to pick up the hat of the team he's signing or he's going to pick up a golf visor, which signifies that he's retiring. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. Listen, I, I don't want to be that guy to say that Aaron Rodgers is a fraud because we all know that Aaron Rodgers is far and away a top five most talented quarterback we've ever seen. Yes. What, what he does in the playoffs is beyond me because it's ridiculous. But playoff success definitely has a part in the GOAT discussion. And to me, at this point, like – People got to stop talking about Aaron Rodgers as the GOAT because a guy who's 25 in Patrick Mahomes now has as many conference championship appearances, as many Super Bowl appearances, and as many Super Bowl MVPs as Aaron Rodgers does. And if all things go, go well, he'll have a second Super Bowl appearance in his first, whatever, five, six years. He's yep. already so, won two. Uh, yeah, sorry. His, he'll have his second Super Bowl championship, I should say. It's true. He has, yeah. So he already has more Super Bowl appearances than Aaron Rodgers too. I didn't even think about that. Yep. Unreal. It's, uh, a half a billion dollar man. Yeah. I don't know what it is though. Like, did he did he sell that bad, or was the rest of the team that bad? Like, I don't know. But like, I mean, the thing, whole team was pretty fraudulent. All, the special teams was absolute oh. shit. I've oh. never seen a special teams coach that bad in my life. How does that imagine, happen? Imagine getting sent home from the playoffs as the number one seed, best record in the NFL because of a blocked punt. Blocked field goal too. That's crazy. The, literally, they are up 10-3, punting from their own end zone. And it was like, okay, the Packers are punting from their own end zone, but the 49ers have not been able to move the ball at all today. No. Like, the game's over. And then yes. you just see the ball fly up in the air like it like, – there's not a chance you can even, like, consider bringing back that special teams coach. I don't care what anybody says. You cannot look at him and be like, you're coming back. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, you I sit there know. and you say, okay, pack your shit. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And, the, and they had 10 guys on the field <laughs> on the last yeah. play of the game. <laughs> like, after right a timeout. Now. After a timeout. After a timeout. That's fucking crazy. Unreal. Ay, ay, ay. Unreal. That was that was like, for me the most boring game of the weekend by a in mile. In the NFL, oh, how yeah. do you not realize you're supposed to be on the field? Like half of you only play special teams, yep. anyways. How do you not realize I'm supposed to be on the field right now? Like I get mad at my pee wee kids for not realizing they're supposed to be on the field. There's so many teams that get away with having bad special teams, and then like at some point it's always catching up to them. Like absolutely, every like, you, you don't so really realize it necessarily always in the regular season, but in the playoffs, like. One play like that changes the whole game. We saw it. Two points. I mean, again, not to not to give a killer transition, but that's what we saw in the beginning of the Bucks Rams game too. I think they had like three kickoffs out of bounds, and they automatically started on the forty. Like, and a, a muffed punt too. I think like it was bad special teams. The Bucks special teams has been horrible. For really the- bad. Like really, really bad. They got away with it last year. Um, yeah, they got away because Mickens is a disgusting kick returner. Yeah, but not like he didn't have that much of an impact. They they couldn't cover punts. They can't cover kickoffs properly. Caught up to them, that's for sure. That's a that was a wild game. game. Unreal. Bro, Unreal game. I almost had a heart attack during that game, and I'm not even a Rams fan. I'm sure Rams better. Yeah. Listen, um what a game. I mean, listen. Saturday was well, – there were some great games, but Sunday, like, I, that's the greatest, like, two-game stretch I think I've ever seen. Like, Absolutely. A game that's at 27-3. to three, Going – what it was, it was 20-3 to three going into the half, 27-3 to three after the first drive of the half. And everyone still kind of just thought in the back of their head, this game isn't over. Like, everyone yeah. kind of thought to themselves, like, yeah, it's over. But no one really thought – what was going to happen next. Like, no, we all, never. We saw it happen. We saw it happen with Brady and the Falcons, and that's like the fluke of the century, obviously. But the way that the Rams lost that lead 
Rams tried nothing to, to do with Brady, Brady, by the way. The Rams nothing tried to, do to lose that game. The only the only thing that Brady did to help them come back was that absolute bomb to Mike Evans. Sure. Over Jalen Ramsey. That was yes, a absolutely. That was a that was a that was a dynamite throw. But yeah, well, that's only six points. Yeah, no, I completely agree. The way that the Rams lost, like lost the Cam Akers lost was was Cam ins- Akers sold. It was insanity. Like everything that could possibly go wrong went wrong. Like All I have never was- seen. Uh, I, I, again, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember the last time I've seen a um, what's it called? A fumble in that critical of a situation ever. Like ever. I think uh, um, what's his name? Jeremy Hill did it against the Steelers. Yes, yes. I'm not that, was, remember it okay. that was a crazy game too. Like that's when Antonio Brown died. Yes, yes. That's like fucking two hands on the ball at all times. Like, and the the way that the Rams were like coached and the way the Rams played was awful in the second half. But literally, the worst thing that could have happened to a team happened to the Bucks, where they sent it all out. That was the worst play call I think I've – that was worse than the Packers last year. This guy sent his halfback off the edge and expected Antoine Winfield to cover the guy who had the triple crown in a the regular safety. season. A safety that's not good in coverage. They put a box safety on the no, this year's I best don't receiver. It. Don't get it. <clears throat> Don't get me wrong. Matt Stafford looks like he's on a freaking mission, man. Let me tell you. The guy's, the guy's balling. Hey, once yeah. you win one, you start rolling. Yeah, and that throw to Cooper Cup. Oh, it was money. You know, absolute rock, too. If he, if, yeah, if he, if he held on to that ball for, like, not even half a second longer, he was getting rocked. And yeah. we're sitting here having a different conversation. But Yeah, and it was probably underthrown and picked off by Winfield. Yeah, who was uh, 20 yards away from Cooper Cup. Yeah, also that. I couldn't but, believe that, though. But Listen, that game was unbelievable, but, like, we got to stop procrastinating because we got to get to the game of the week. And, like – Game of my life. Like – That was definitely like, the best football game I've ever watched in my entire life. I think so. Like it's, I think it's by far the best yeah, I've seen. for sure. I'm, just, I'm trying to think of other games that were that insane. Like, obviously, the, the Chiefs-Rams game from a couple years ago was nuts. Had more points. But it wasn't this crazy. It wasn't a divisional round playoff game. Like, no, but the, like to me, this game, like it, why it's so special to me is, however, there was like 20, 25 or twenty eight points in the fourth quarter. Like this game wasn't a shootout until the last, the last yeah. quarter. Yeah. No, I, I had minutes. the over, and I was stressing until like eight minutes left yeah. in the fourth. Yeah, that's it. I'm saying like, the, like the Rams Chiefs game that we saw, whatever. I think it was twenty seventeen when golf was still there and all that. Like. The, it was a shootout the whole way. Like, no defense could make a stop. There was no turnovers. It was just score, 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 score. This game was like, there's a few stops mixed in here and there. And then in the fourth quarter, both quarterbacks are just like, I'm going to yeah. take shit up nonstop. I mean, that's what it turned into. And like, in the last, like, four minutes, like, maybe the be- best four minutes and, like, ending of a football game, like, they'll ever be. Like, but <laughs> once again, which we talked about last year, what screwed the Bills is Josh Allen's your best running back. Yeah. yeah, like you can't give the you can't turn around and give the ball to Singletary because you don't trust them. So that was the worst part, though. The last they got to find Singletary a way to get a running back good. because first of all, Josh Allen can't be taking those seven hits a game as a no. quarterback, and you're gonna bank on him and give him. I, I honestly, yes, I agree with you, but like he's bigger than anyone else on the field, barring like a couple D line. So is Cam Newton. I'm not comparing. Well, like he's the most comparable to in his prime is most comparable to Josh Allen. Josh, yeah. Josh Allen's definitely better. But, yeah, you want your quarterback taking those hits. I don't. And in, in, in the playoffs, I'm okay with it because yeah. Cam Newton looked for a lot of hits too. As much as I love the guy, he looked for a lot of. He didn't go down properly. Josh Allen doesn't either, but but he's not taking headshots left and right like Cam Newton was. I know, but I still don't want him taking eight shots. Like if he he looked for the, he wouldn't go out of bounds. Josh Allen's not a go out of bounds. He's getting that extra yard. He's gonna yeah, yeah, lead. absolutely. Eventually, you know, if he leads with the wrong shoulder one time, I uh, I don't know. So it's going to get a little risky. Yeah, you're right. I, if it's the regular season, I probably want him to, to chill out a bit. But the divisional round, you're trying to beat the Chiefs that you haven't been able to beat to get to the AC championship. But that's what I'm saying is he shouldn't have to do. be in that position to do it. You should have a real running back who's capable of doing that for you. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really think that, that that played like the biggest factor in them losing. 
Uh, obviously, it was a great game considering, like, those are two guys that are going to be going head-to-head for the next decade. Like, we just got a preview of, of what's to come. And that, I think to me that's what, like, really made this game, like, even better than, than what it actually was. Um, I, I want to talk about the way the Bills played the last 13 seconds of the game because yep. I think that is the reason. <laughs> I mean, they, these guys played the sidelines with 13 seconds left and three timeouts and left the entire field open. And, you know, we saw what the, what the Chiefs could do. So, speaking of bad defense with the Bucks game, I think there was the, the last 13 seconds where it weren't managed properly, that's for sure. I want to see what the real offensive play call was, though, because apparently that wasn't the real call. Like, Kelsey and, and uh, Mahomes made it up on the line. So, I want right. to see, like – They probably weren't expecting the, the entire middle of the field to be well, wide. No, 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 the Bills were playing it as if the Chiefs had no timeouts. Was. Exactly, which, you yeah. know – Cause that's what happened, right? Like the 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 Chiefs line, whatever it had, like they had like eight seconds left. The Chiefs lined up, and the Bills called a timeout, which yeah. sent them back off the field. And apparently, Kelsey went up to Mahomes. He said, "If we're gonna line up in the same way, if they're lined up the same way, I'm just gonna run into that yeah, gap." Yeah, there, there was a video that came out. I don't know who who dropped it, but it was like a mic'd up, like or whatever. They caught everything they were saying, and Kelsey, like after the timeout, Kelsey was like, "If they line up like that, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it." And then when he was on the line they're and he moved in, he looked at Mahomes and he was like. Whatever, and then I was like, "Kels, go, go, like, do Kels, do it, do Kels, it, do it, do it." Yeah. So. Yeah. Even did you hear what Orlando Brown said? Orlando Brown, like, no, they didn't tell anybody what they were doing. So Orlando Brown, like, Kelsey was lined up next to him at on the left side, and Orlando Brown thought that he was gonna chip the defensive end, so he thought he was gonna have help. That's why, like, if you see Orlando Brown kind of got beat, it's because he was expecting Kelsey to chip the guy instead That's of. That's another thing, though, too. There at the end, like, what are the Bills doing rushing for? No business yeah. rushing Literally. for. They like, had no business. Really hit Mahomes all day or all game. And then yeah. you get into the situation where there's 13 seconds. Like, if they want to run the ball, let them do that. Yeah. Literally. If like, they want to hold the ball. Man, if, he wants they're to not hold yeah, if Patty Mahomes wants to wait oh, back no. there for five I'll seconds. About to go I have, dude, they could have played They could have played man with three on top and the game is done. I don't understand. Rush two. What, I, I don't understand what they're doing, you know? I don't get it. Yeah, another guy I'm gutted for, who I think would, honestly would have made a difference, is, is Trey White. He's been yeah. out for a while. Had to watch from the sideline. Like, yeah, I don't know if he would have made that much of a difference in this game, but he's a very nope. smart guy. At the end of the game, he, he would have. Nah, anyways, uh, I'm was gutted also- for the Bills fans. There, yeah, me too. I feel bad for them. I'm a Pats fan. <laughs> Did you guys see that awesome. stat though? The Chiefs are now in the playoffs. They're three and one when their win probability jumps below 5%, the rest of the NFL is 1-38. and Yeah. (laughs) Insanity. 3-1 and when your win probability jumps below 5%. Like, you think about it, like, any other team in the NFL, any team besides the Chiefs, goes down three three points with 13 seconds left, you're like, the game's over. Even the Chiefs. I was like, you know what? I was pissed. I was looking at my TV. I was like, you know what? There is still a chance, but I just had a feeling. It's over, you know, like yeah. we were, Cam and I were joking about it. We're like, imagine they went down the field in 13 seconds. I, fully I saw like, a bet slip. I, I saw a bet I slip. I saw that too. Someone bet like twenty-five dollars on the Chiefs money line when they were At down three with thirteen seconds left. Paid out like eight hundred bucks. It was fucking it's insane. insane. But yeah. No, no, I crazy. reacted as if there was no time left when Gabe Davis yeah, scored yeah, that last one. I was literally like, oh, nice. Like, me and OBS didn't go 0 4 this week. Like, let's go. Yeah, and then... the, the fact that Gabe Davis had four touchdowns is ridiculous. Game of his life. Yeah. Game of his life. Yeah. More, more yeah, that touchdowns than Stephon Diggs. Sorry that fucking catches. That secondary is, I mean, obviously they lost Tyron Matthew early Bro, on. That honestly, when I texted you guys, I didn't see the, the replay. But he yeah. made Mike Hughes look like a fucking bum. Yeah. Which yeah. Not, I'm not saying Mike Hughes is exactly the number one lockdown corner in the NFL, but. No, but like, if you're in the NFL, you shouldn't be getting dogged like that. Those ankles. <laughs> no, that, that was one of the nasty. craziest I've ever seen. There's no way. Like, Gabe Davis already had two touchdowns at that point, no? Yeah. Yeah. No, three. So, what are you doing yeah, giving Mike, Mike Hughes, like, 25 yards off the line of scrimmage just letting him get burned? <laughs> Regard, no, like he, he ankles were gone. I, yeah, I think I would have retired after that. I would have been don't like, don't leave him alone. Hey, but listen, uh, the way that the regulation ended there, I mean, Harrison Bucker was not having his, himself a great game. I mean, awful. 
Like he was having a bad game, and <clears> the ice. I mean, respect to him. The, the, in the game, I'll, I'll still take him to kick that field goal every time. Oh, 100 percent. That's what I'm saying. I, I'm giving him all the praise. I'm saying, man, it, it takes some balls to step up after missing missing an extra point, missing missing a field goal, to come yeah. and hit a kick in that magnitude. But of course, we all know what happened after regulation. The Chiefs won the toss. They got the ball, drove down the field quite Stupid easily, ass. and won the, and won the game. And that you knew whoever our, won the toss. Yeah. Was so that brings us to yeah. our next topic. The the big conversation now in the world of football, as it has been ever since the the Patriots came back on the Chiefs and and won in overtime in whatever 2018, is did the NFL need to change their overtime rules? And personally, I think yeah. I think absolutely, yeah. I live in Canada where the rules are somewhat the same as the NCAA. And to me, absolutely, without a doubt, those are the right way to play the game. There's no other sport. There's no other league that doesn't give both teams a chance to win in overtime. It makes no sense. The yeah. NHL, it's a face-off. Whoever gets the puck, that it's it's a fair game. I was gonna say, to be fair, like not every other league is offense on at one time and defense on at the other. But isn't that's, isn't it funny how the Chiefs proposed to change the rule two years ago? Yeah, got denied. Yeah, they got denied, and I, I think I don't think they're, they're gonna change this rule. We've been talking about this for way too long, and it's if it hasn't changed already, it's not gonna change. And everyone says that defense wins championships and whatnot, which sure is true. But this game was a perfect example of a good offense will always beat a good defense. And I will 100% always be behind that. And we saw it firsthand. We saw the Kansas City Chiefs, the best offense in the league, absolutely tear apart the Buffalo Bills, which was the number one defense in the league. And we knew it. Whether the Buffalo or the Chiefs won the toss, we knew it. The game was over. And that's just, well, the, that's just... the Niners. The Niners have disproved that twice in this year's playoffs already. And they might do it a third time. Yeah, but it, 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 it's different when you're, when you're talking about two great offenses versus two good defenses, right? I mean, the, the, the 49ers, they're, they're, their offense isn't winning the game for them. It's their defense and their special teams. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Yeah, it, Kansas, it, it, it's the number one offense in the Cowboys, number one scoring offense anyways, shut them down, shut down Green Bay last week to one touchdown. Ah, it's impressive, man. Mm -hmm. I see your point, though. Like, I understand what you mean, but. Yeah, I thought it was a crazy game. I think the OT sucks, you know, like it, it's, it's doesn't make it that exciting either. You know, I don't, I don't know. I think like, you know, if, if the defense just needs to get a stop, like why don't we give both defenses a chance to get a stop? You know, everyone's looking at, looking at it that way. I, I feel like, like, I just feel like the big argument is like, yeah, your defense needs to get a stop, you know, obviously. So I don't know. That's why I was saying. Like, I, think, I think, honestly, if we had college rules overtime, that game would have been like the LSU and Texas. Yeah, it would never Yeah, end. but they changed that, though. They like changed the rules in college. I know. But so, like, I'm just saying, that's why I'm saying it would have been like that game and mm -hmm. not like any other college football game. I would I would get rid of that. I would leave it how they had it when AM and LSU duped it out. I wouldn't go to the, like, forced no. two-point converts. You wouldn't? Yeah. No. It's kind of – I, I don't know. Like, you'd rather, like – then you get just as bad of a conversation as yeah, we're having now. It's one like play. Yeah, one the play. team couldn't score on a two-yard play, and now they lost. Like, mm -hmm. to me, the only the only argument against that is at least each team get a chance. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I agree. It's better than what we have now, but um, I think it would be a pretty similar conversation if, like, let's say theoretically both teams go out from the twenty-five twice, they're probably both scoring. Then you get a two-point convert Duke out challenge, and then, you know, I don't know. It, I I, heard, I saw people saying just let them play a whole fifth quarter, but yeah, like, then what kind of what I was thinking. you give? The game probably still would have ended a hundred to ninety nine. Yeah, no, just like you you can't make the guys play that much more, and then turn around seven days later. And then what happens if it's tied at the end of that quarter too? You know? No, well that's what I mean. Like it just keeps mm -hmm. going, but I'm, you can't play another another potentially like half a game. Yeah, no extra quarter is a lot of tax on the body. So. No way. I, saw, I, I was looking at like I saw a bunch of like different ideas for, for like how to like how to like change the rules. Like I saw one where it was like whoever wins the toss, uh, chooses a spot on the field, and 
the, the other team chooses whether they want to go on offense or defense first. So like, let's say the Chiefs would have won the toss. They would have been like, oh, we want, to, like, we want the ball to be placed at the eight or something like that. And then they have whatever. It's their first and goal from the eight. Uh, and then Buffalo chooses whether they want to be on defense or offense first. Something like that. I would literally choose the 50 every time. Yeah, you could do that. Crossbar challenge from the 50. Both quarterbacks do good. <laughs> the best part is, I feel like they would have both the... thrown it over the crossbar. Yeah. Yeah. But listen, uh, is Make there anyone in here? Kickers. Keep kicking field anyone... goals until one of you misses. Exactly. <laughs> is there anyone on this podcast that says absolutely not? I want the, the rules to change the, to stay, or you everyone want the rules to change? No, no, they they got no. Change. The, they got change. People's main argument is like, oh, your defense has to prove it, but like, then the other defense doesn't have to prove it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yes, it's it's complete like, BS. It's it's yeah. it, to me that's like that chief defense wasn't me. stopping a nosebleed either. Like, let's no, not no. kid ourselves no, and say they would have. Buffalo's defense was getting a stop far before the Chiefs' defense yes. was getting stopped. Right. Yeah. You saw it. The the Buffalo the, the previous two drives absolutely just tore it down the Chiefs' defense. Like it was, it was ridiculous. But anyways, we'll move on to our next topic and. Uh, it's going to be our picks for this weekend in the AFC Championship. We got the Bengals going to Arrowhead. Wait, read everyone's record first. Oh, yeah. man, here we go. <laughs> I believe Dawson is at 9-1. and one. Myself and Shane are at 7-3. and three. Uh, Cam and LBS <laughs> and the public are at 5-5. Five and five. Um, At least we're not worse than the public. For yeah. the record, Dawson's Super Bowl pick has been eliminated. Just, just going to throw that one out there. Yeah, That is a big deal. So myself and Shane are still are in the running for the Super Bowl pick to be correct. But Dawson does have the Chiefs lose in the Super Bowl. So if that, that's got to count for something if they make it and like, lose too. Like if the Rams beat the Chiefs. I feel, like, I feel like the Rams winning is more than the Chiefs losing. Oh, 100%. No, if the Rams win, you, you, win, the, you win the pool for sure. Sorry, Dawson. I'm yeah. going to fade Dawson this week. I don't, I don't have any picks written. I'm just going to fade Dawson and try and catch him. All right. <laughs> have fun. So I'm not going to do that. Have fun not taking the Rams. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go on. Where are we starting? But, yeah, we'll start with the Bengals and the Chiefs. Uh, we saw this game happen, I think it was week 16 or week 7. I don't know what it was. But um, the Bengals <laughs> actually won, and it was an absolute bomb fest. It was uh, – an absolute shootout. Uh, obviously, we know what my pick is. I have the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. I've had it from the start. I still think the Chiefs are the best team in the league, and uh, I'm going to take them. Um, very impressed with what the Bengals are doing, though. They have a fantastic future. And, hey, if the Bengals were to pull it off, it wouldn't surprise me that much. Definitely would surprise me, though. Um, but, yeah, I think Patrick Mahomes is just playing, at a, at a, playing his best football ever, and the Chiefs are uh, – Looking as good as they have this year. And uh, not, there's not much else to say about it. They're at home, too. That's what it is. Hmm. Chiefs are going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, I have to stick with my pick, too. But um, if if the uh, Cincinnati offense plays anywhere near what um, the Buffalo offense did, it's going to be a very, very good game. Um, just because that, that Cincy secondary is – I think they'll hold up better than Buffalo. Um, that's not saying much because Buffalo didn't really hold up, but um, it's going to be a good game. I think I, I obviously have, again, I have to go with the chiefs, have to ride with the chiefs, but um, it would not shock me. I will say it here. I, it will not shock me if Joe Burr, Joe Shiesty, uh and the Bengals, you know, pull this one off, but I'm riding with the chiefs. Yeah. I'm in the same boat as, as the boys here. Um, I just, I would love, to, I would love to see the Bengals, you know, just, they're gonna. I, they're obviously. I think they're gonna air it out a lot. They'll they'll, they'll yeah. be able to throw on the throw on the Chiefs defense, and if they can get Mixon going too, bro, it's kind of scary. I think they could win this game, mm -hmm. but obviously <laughs> we're all gonna stick with the home dogs. You know, probably the the, the best team in the NFL right now, uh, the Chiefs at home. That's my pick. Yep. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to beat the same. It's hard to beat the same team twice in twice. the same season. Especially when we're talking about Patty Mahomes, Tyreek, Travis Kelsey, Steve Holy Spagnuolo, shit. who doesn't get enough credit uh, for what he's doing down there. Tyron Matthews is going to be back. 
there's no doubt he's going to be back. He practiced in full today. He had to do his test after practice. Um, but again, like Joey Bosa, if he has to put on – or Nick Bosa, sorry. If he has to put on another helmet, he will. Um, so that defense will be back to, to full strength. I think it's going to be closer than seven, but I'm taking the Chiefs. Um, I got the Chiefs written down. And and I think it's going to be a shootout. But the reason I chose the Chiefs is for the sole reason because I don't think you could get sacked nine times again and win a game. And the Chiefs pass rush. Ingram on Sunday was an absolute game wrecker. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Dawson went off about it uh, three weeks ago because the Colts didn't trade for him at the deadline. And Ingram showed what he showed in, in uh, L.A. But uh, – like, like Dawson said, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if the Bengals won because Joe Burrow is uh, ice cold out here and, and things are starting to get going in, in Cincinnati. I just want to show you guys a live thing of what what the offenses are going to do to Eli Apple and Mike Hughes. Oh, and this is going to be them on Sunday, <laughs> both of them. Let's talk about them. Eli Apple very quickly. Oh, oh, God. So, so that's, that's what's going to happen. Bro, like you say that shit. You instantly, if I'm his agent, I'm like, you're writing a tweet right now that you got hacked. He's talking about New Orleans. Oh, he's going off, though. Like, it's not just one time. Bro, if I'm his agent, I'm dropping him. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, Oh, my God. Oh, it's literally Tyreek Hill. Did you guys see? And then Jamar Chase, and they're both going to have, like, 250 yards. Oh, my God. Did you guys see, though, the some guy made, like, a a mixtape of all of Eli (laughs) Apple's terrible plays? (laughs) <laughs> so I don't, I don't think I have enough time during my day to watch that. So <laughs> my God, big Giants draft pick too. Yeah, don't don't get me started. Oh, oh, man. The Giants, yeah, some of his tweets, tweets. But I got a taste of that too. Was he not like a top ten pick? He was eleven. I think he was early. Okay. Yeah. No, ten. I think he was ten. He was very early. I remember exactly good. where I was when he got drafted. He too. was disgusting in college, so it was yeah. kind of like you know, like he deserved to be there, but yeah. Let me tell you, he's uh, but yeah, and it's like my whole Twitter feed is just roasting him. Like, his his fucking tweets were crazy, yeah. bro. Like, it's literally on. like every fan. It's not even like just the <laughs> Saints and the Giants fans that are roasting him. It's every fan base. Oh yeah, him. bro. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Mike Hughes and Eli Apple better jersey swap at the end of the game because they're both gonna be burnt toast. Oh my god. Well, yeah, you um, Chiefs in a close a one. Jersey. Chiefs in a walk off field goal. Really, a walk off? Okay. Just keep your mouth shut. Can you? No, no, Eli. <laughs> no one else does that. What like, the fuck up, Shane. <laughs> you know, like, man. Anyways. Yeah. Um, well, listen, we have, uh, we have the other side here, and uh, that's the 49ers going to LA to play the Rams. And uh, listen, Cam said it before it's incredibly hard to beat a team twice. It's a, it's 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 almost impossible to beat a team three times, right? Four Niners swept the Rams this year in the regular season. Give me the Rams. They're on a mission. The Niners have now won six in a row, by the way. If anyone's counting, against six in a row against the, the the Rams. Something about it. I don't know, man. The Rams look different in the playoffs. Aaron Donald, the best player in the league, still playing. Absolutely unbelievable. Ron Miller turned back the clock, boys. Bro, it's like he, it's like he was saving himself. Like it, it, yeah, honestly, right. like after they traded for him, I was kind of like, "Where's Von Miller? Like he hasn't really been a factor in any game they played." And now, like, like you said, yeah, just turn back the clock. I mean, it was a tough injury to come off of last year. No, no, definitely, definitely. But just the same, like what he looks like now compared to even like three, four weeks ago, it's. Crazy. And OBJ. Yeah. Oh. If if, if any of your fucking bookies give you OBJ anything under 60 yards, take Hammer. the over. Hammer the over. Bro, let me tell you, if there's one guy I miss, I miss the good old days. I miss the good old Not days. Eli Apple, eh? Oh, no. <laughs> Bro, if Eli Apple, if I could wipe Eli Apple from my memory, I would. <laughs> But no, I got uh, I got the Rams in this game too, so I'm I'm setting up for a Chiefs Rams Super Bowl. It's gonna be a fucking awesome Super yeah. Bowl. Yeah. Shit. Listen, 
Mm-hmm. Listen, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and say that the Rams have a better offense than the Packers do. Because this this season they didn't. Um I will tell you that the Rams have a better defense than the Packers. And I'm gonna tell you that if the 49ers want any chance at winning this game, they gotta play a little bit better than they did. Uh, they have to actually score on offense. Yeah, they have to score. Like like because to me, I don't think uh, I don't think the Rams are going to be held to ten points. I think they're going to score a little bit more than that. And uh, if you can't score a touchdown on the Packers defense, I I'm, I feel like it's going to be hard, to, a little bit harder to score on the on the Rams. Uh, I mean, obviously, the, obviously, the terrain is going to be different. Yes, it was cold. I was say. Like that. Cam but, Akers is going to have the game of his life. Yeah. Book it. Yeah, Rams I think back. revenge tour, baby. Yeah, I think the Rams are just too good on offense obviously the Niners defense is, is legitimate uh but I also can't trust that Jimmy Garoppolo to go into obviously so far I won't be bumping but uh I just yeah, I won't can't be trust. bumping because they fucking they made so many rules yeah, yeah. It's, it's still gonna be full of red though like yeah I don't know I just can't trust Jimmy G to uh to, Bro, to bring a playoff mean, Ebo starting at Q. what Ebo starting at Q <laughs> You know what? I wouldn't mind that. Yeah, I just I can't trust Jimmy G to bring a team to a Super Bowl. Not that it, not that he's actually bringing them there. You've done it. The team is carrying him. But uh, yeah, Rams all the way. This should I don't think this game should be as close as the Chiefs game. For for the purpose of just watching an entertaining Super Bowl, I think it would be criminal to put the Niners in, in the Super Bowl. Agreed. Either the Agreed. Bengals or Agreed. the the Chiefs would blow them out. Yeah. So, Jimmy G doesn't belong in another Super Bowl. He had his time. I'm, I'm going to pick the Rams here, but I'm, like, actually terrified that the Niners are going to win this game. Stop it. Like, no, but I'm actually I'm – not, I'm not terrified because it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but also contemplating little Debo Samuel Super Bowl MVP future bet right now because he's, like – Frank Clark plus, and it's not close. <laughs> he's, like, plus 2,000. And if the Niners do get there and win – Jimmy G's He's not. Yes. Um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the Rams here. I don't want to go on record and go. I think uh, this weekend just the way the last couple weekends have gone. It's well, actually, not the first weekend of the playoffs, but there's been upsets. A uh, couple came out of nowhere, so, yeah, so just keep your eyes peeled for an up- upset. Nope, not what I like to hear. As an honorary fans, wow. Honor- honorary honorary Rams fan. <laughs> As an honorary Rams fan. I'm I'm flying out to SoFi for the Super Bowl and for uh this weekend's game. So uh go Rams. New Maybe Rams, uh, Rams, Matt Rams, Stafford's baby. wife can get you tickets. You saw she's doing that? She bought like a fuck ton of tickets because I think their address because they restricted the address for where yeah. you can buy it, but like she has a, a, a place in LA County, so she bought a fuck ton of tickets and she's giving them to Rams fans or something. All right, like Matthew Stafford's wife. I don't know your name, but uh, this is my. I think formal... it's Julie, but it could be uh, wrong. Julie, if that's not your name, I'm sorry. It's canceled. <laughs> but uh, this is my application to get one of those tickets. I just need one. It's fine. I'll, uh, if you want to give me two, I'll find a friend to bring. But uh, you know, just one. I'll take. I'll take one. It's cool. Done. And I will. I will hug Matthew Stafford after that big Super Bowl win. Hey, you heard it here, Julie. Julie Stafford. I really hope that's – someone double-check that. Oh, no, it's Kelly. It. It's Kelly. Oh, Kelly. oh man. Oh. Now i got to redo the whole thing. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> yeah. Kelly, I'm sorry. You know what? I wasn't that far off. Now I'm not going to get the ticket, Cam. Well, I don't think you're getting it in the first place, but <laughs> – Kelly, you I'm sorry. Know. Well, now now we'll never know, I guess. Ay, ay, ay. We'll call her Cooley. So, uh, listen, we got uh, we got two unanimous picks here. Yeah. Yeah, that's so dangerous. That's Me and so Dawson sketch. saved the boys last We're week. We're about to be put on a fucking poster. Like, Listen, we had three players. unanimous picks in the first week, and they were all right. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it definitely does give us a chance to become a meme, Yeah, unfortunately. Um, speaking of memes, Aaron <laughs> Rodgers became a big meme. And uh, this weekend might have been his last game with the Packers. It so. Was. Not might. It was. It was? It was. I love how two weeks ago we were like, wow, I think he'll probably come back. He's not coming back. So now we look at our next topic, and that's uh, that's the futures of Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. 
Because this is like maybe the first time like there's a serious chance that Tom Brady's done. And Big Ben's already done. Big yeah. Ben retired today, officially. These are uh, massive names in, for us growing up. Like massive names. I don't remember the I don't remember the NFL before these guys. <laughs> there. I mean, obviously Crazy. not Tom Brady. Tom Brady was drafted before I was born. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. Um, listen, I don't know. I think if there's anyone that has more chance of playing, it's probably Tom Brady, just because you, you feel like he, he wouldn't want to go out on that on those terms. And Aaron Rodgers just seems to be in quite the mess right now. But the Broncos seem to be the, the place that he that he would want to go. They just got the Packers OC signed as their as their head coach there. Um, but yeah, um, personally, if I if I was a betting man, I'd probably bet on Aaron Rodgers just not being there next year, um, just not playing. I don't think he's going to be back with the Packers. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's going to be quite an intriguing offseason. Yeah, I literally I like this is the first year where I'm like, okay, Brady could really be done. Mm-hmm. Just crazy, crazy to think. But um, honestly, I, I could see him running it back one more time. Um, I was speaking to my friend this morning, and I think, like, Brady deserves to go out the way Kobe – well, not the way Kobe went out, but the way, like, Kobe and Derek Jeter went out. Like, like Tom Brady deserves a farewell tour. Like, he deserves to go to every stadium and be honored in every stadium. Like, obviously, he won't play in every stadium, but I think Tom Brady definitely deserves a farewell tour. Um, so I, I would hope he came back just for that. Yeah. Honestly, I know, like, we love to hit on Tom Brady. Person, obviously, personally not. But I know I know we got some haters in this – on this pod. But, like, I'll be very sad when, when that announcement becomes official. But one thing I will say is one of, one of the quotes that came out after the game was he said, like, the team doesn't deserve me if I'm not at my best. But he just led the league in passing yards in a bunch yeah. of – that. So, like on the field, he's he's more than capable. We know that, but again, like if it's starting to catch up with his family and stuff, I could see him walking away seriously. Yeah, I think I, it would be like a lot of conditions, though. Like he would say, like I'll come back if Gronk is back. I'll come up back if you resign Godwin. Stuff like yeah. that. I think. I think Gronk is the same way, though. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, that... he said he said he would say no if they asked him today, right, or whatever. Like that was a few days ago. I think that Brady quote really came down to also not like his numbers more, just like his commitment to actually. Yes. No. Yeah. Him. Of course. Of course. And I think, I think, I think he'll be back personally. I, again, Dawson just said a farewell tour would be in play. And I think Matt said it too. It's probably not the way he wants to go out. So I could, I, I could see him coming back, but I also see a scenario where he's like, you know what? Like I'm not in, I'm not into it anymore. You know, boys. So. That's a very big possibility. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Rodgers is an absolute mystery to me. I could see him golfing. I could see him on the Broncos. You know what? I wouldn't even be shocked if he suited up for the for the Packers again and beefed everyone in the organization. You know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what he's going to do. Yeah. Dude, I like also it's, wouldn't it's, be it's surprised. the craziest thing. That... Sorry, I go ahead. I would be surprised if we saw him host in Jeopardy next year. Yeah. Like, yeah. who knows? Let's yeah. throw up a crazy thing here, boys. I think Rodgers ends up in Denver. But I think, to me, I think Brady retires. Because I think Brady just wanted to play New England, and he did that this year, and they don't play New England next year. So I think he, he's done. I think he retires. But Bruce Arians doesn't want to restart this whole thing. He doesn't want to have – I don't think Kyle Trask is ready to be a starting quarterback. No. I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say if Brady retires, Aaron Rodgers is going to replace him. I would kill myself. That would be insane. I would, I would kill myself. Um, I don't think they want to – they're not going to restart. Um, there's no quarterbacks in this draft that they're going to be willing to take that's going to be there at 32 or whatever, or whatever, 28, 30, mm-hmm. that they could draft that's going to be <clears throat> the starter this year. So he's not going to want to restart. He's going to go out and get another big name. And Rodgers, if he's available, I wouldn't be surprised if it's him. Yeah, that, that's not even, like, oh. that crazy of a take, I don't think, like, honestly. But the thing is, like – they would have to lock that up. Because if Brady goes, how many other free agents are gotten with him? Godwin won't resign, probably not. I don't think they have the money to sign Godwin. I think yeah, Godwin's but, the number one contract, the number one receiver contract. You think? Yeah, for sure. Listen, if that happens, I, I don't know what I would do because after this, this offseason, like, 
everyone's saying that the Saints organization is going to shambles. I, I completely disagree. Um, we did just – I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about a little bit about Sean Payne before, but if Tom Brady doesn't come back, the Saints are very well, very close to being the odds-on favorite to win that division. If they can get Jameis back and settle their contract issues, which apparently they can, the Saints are going to be fantastic. The Saints are going to hopefully draft an offensive weapon – in the first round, they're probably going to get someone good. And if they get Michael Thomas back, they're going to have a top five. Line. They Michael, get Michael. I don't think Michael Thomas plays for anybody in New Orleans except for Sean Payton. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll see. But um, listen, yeah, this is going to be a long offseason for teams like the Saints. The Packers, too, are in trouble. Like, it's yeah, but at least the good. Packers set up for life after Rodgers. They drafted love. I mean, I'm not saying love is, is, uh, Obviously, Aaron Rodgers, but they did draft him. He's been in the system for two yeah, years. Yeah, no, but you look at other guys that are gone, Darius Smith, Devontae. Uh, Apparently, they're going to franchise tag Devontae. I don't know how well that's going to be. They could, but he could also hold out, and then you get into a whole Yeah, I don't think he's going to play without Rodgers. It won't go over well. Yeah, well, uh, listen, we just found out that Sean Payton was not, not necessarily retiring, but quote-unquote stepping away <clears throat> from the Saints organization, stepping down as a head coach. So I just want to say thank you, Sean Payton. I mean, you're, uh, I became a Saints fan in 2008, 2007, 2008, and he was already the, the quarterback. I mean, uh, the quarterback, the, the coach. It was the same thing as Drew Brees. I mean, I didn't know life as a Saints fan before those two, and now they're both gone. Uh, Sean Payton, one of the most offensively gifted-minded coaches of all time, one of the best play callers, uh, made, a, made a Saints team that, that was really not good look very good for a whole decade. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see what happens with the saints now. I mean, good things always come to an end. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not ready to press the panic button in the Saints organization just yet. I mean, we'll see what happens with quarterback. If they draft a quarterback in the first round, I'll be pretty upset. I'm going to be honest. I really want them to bring back Jameis, but, uh, we will see, but yeah. Um, I guess we're gonna we're gonna end this episode here with our lock of the week in terms of betting with consequences. Mm-hmm. So uh, last week uh, we we all know what the consequence was. It was our clip of the week. It was all of us uh, making an educated guess on uh, what to bet on last week, and four <laughs> of the five of us lost. And in turn, that consequence is probably the worst consequence we've had. Wait, wait, wait. Let them know who won. Let them know the guy who was made fun of. Just by the way, thank yeah. you. The one uh, Sh- Shaner ha- was the was the one out of five that didn't that uh, that that yeah. didn't lose. Yeah. He, he won. Nick Suzuki came in clutch for him. Um, unfortunately, four of the five of us now have to do a ice bucket challenge. I'm uh, getting ready to do mine after we film this. Unfortunately, uh, this week not heading not heading into the I want to say safer direction, but uh, this week if you get it wrong, we've all uh, agreed that you got to do the cinnamon challenge. Ugh. So, um, do we even have cinnamon in this house? I don't know. We're gonna have to go out and get some, if anything. Um, but uh, hopefully, my lock of the week hits. I went with uh, quarterback passing touchdowns last week. Went Aaron Rodgers over one and a half. Thought that was a lock. He threw for zero. Um, not gonna learn from my mistake, and I'm gonna go straight back into passing touchdowns. I'm gonna get Patrick Mahomes over one and a half passing touchdowns at minus 210. Um, I think after the way he played last week, I, I can't, I, I can't go, I can't go against him. I think the Chiefs are a lock for the Super Bowl, um, and I'm excited. I love Patrick Mahomes, man. Uh, yeah, I'm playing it safe too. I thought I was playing it fucking safe last week, taking Packers plus one and a half. Um, clearly was wrong there, um, but I'm. I wanted to take Chiefs money line, but that came in at like minus three sixty. Um, so we got a little parlay action. I'm parlaying Ooh. Chiefs money line and then over 44 and a half points in the game. Oh my god. Total for minus one at minus 175. This guy this guy wants to do the <laughs> wants to do the cinnamon challenge. What do you mean? That was 44 and a half points. One team could score that by themselves. I'm saying he's parlaying and he's risking it. Risking it for the risky. <laughs> That's the safest parlay I've heard in a while. Yeah, yeah. At minus I mean, you, if you have a minus in a parlay, you're playing it safe. Yep. Good for you for cooking that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah. I respect that. That's, not that's hard work. That's hard work. Good for you. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay in the same game here. I'm taking an alternate spread. Kansas City minus three and a half. They just can't get they just can't walk it off with a field goal. I'm confident they won't. They will. No, they won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh Casey minus three and a half. That's the lock of the week, boys. Come on now. Yeah. I also have a, an alternate spread. So look at that. But um Cincinnati Bengals first half plus eight and a half. Coming wow. in minus, coming in juicy. at minus two hundred. That's juicy. Well not as long as, as long as they don't give a give up a big score before halftime or something, that should be all right. Yeah. I mean, shout out to all my Nick Suzuki fans out there. It was a, <laughs> it was a roller coaster of emotions during that game. I'm not gonna do that again because that was really scary. I'm gonna go to football this week for the first wow. time and I don't know how long. Currently sitting at minus one eighty. That would be your Super Bowl champion, L.A. Rams, money line against the wow. 49ers. Wow. Risky wow. business. Go big or go home. Yeah. So he's doubling down. He's, he, might have to, he might have to be a part of the meme, and he might have to do the cinnamon challenge because of that. <laughs> oh, man, I don't want to do that. <laughs> oh, man. I don't like cinnamon, so, uh, oh, man. If I gotta do an ice bucket challenge and then the cinnamon challenge, like a week, like one week apart, I, yeah. I might quit the pod if, if I. Have to yeah. the <laughs> it's gonna be dark days. Yeah. Oh. All right, boys. Uh, well, listen, that does it for episode fifty-six, conference championship Sunday. Are you kidding me? Let's go, like this video, listen to the rest of our freaking videos, give us a like. I guess Shane already leaning in for that kiss. Oh. <laughs> Shane is already ready. Go Rams, baby!